to have my microphone. Just, just leave me on and I'll tell you. This is a lovely welcome video from Boris, yes? Okay. My name is Boris Herrmann. This is my job, my passion, but of course I depend on the ocean. It's my workplace and uh, to do my fascinating sport that I love, I need them to be preserved. And the biggest threats for the wildlife, the biodiversity on the oceans and in the oceans is climate change. The oceans get warmer due to the man-made global warming. They absorb 93% of the excess heat, profoundly changing biology, chemistry in the oceans and being a huge threat to biodiversity. We are in a race against time and we shouldn't forget over all the science and debates and discussions that we know clearly what to do. This is a decade where we have to turn around. We need to cut emissions fast. To tackle climate change is of course one of the biggest challenges for humanity at the moment, but it's also a challenge for the best ideas and for the fastest pace because it's a race against time and it's a race we must win. Good to be back in nature. Let's see what's the next challenge. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Boris. Unfortunately, we're hoping Boris could be live, but unfortunately he's out at sea at the moment. Actually, he just got back. He just got uh, back, okay. He, uh, he came in th third, third right. place for the first leg of the ocean race that started in Alicante and like has uh, eight stopovers. And this was the first part. And, uh, yeah, he was very fast, and uh, now it collided with the, with the arrival. So uh, sorry for that, but he sends his best regards, and um, hopefully another time, yeah. So Cornelius, what is your relationship with Boris? <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm uh, basically running the partnership in sustainability program, so like the messages that you just heard from Boris, is, uh, that's on my desk. So I'm, I'm responsible for driving the sustainability program that we have. Uh, we are a racing team, we are a sailing team, but we're much more than that. Um, uh, for example, Felix, you mentioned these fantastic uh, uh, stories about innovation and decarbonizing of shipping. So this is, for example, at the heart of, of Team Alicia, we run a sustainability program, uh, education program with kids. So we, uh, we try to get kids to our boat, show them uh, how beautiful it is to sail, to be out in nature, and to teach them about climate change and ocean health. And, uh, and with, with that, uh, this is uh, basically like one of our cornerstones of the ca campaign that we run, uh, including science. So we have on our board of a yacht, Malizia Sea Explorer, that's uh, the name of our boat. We have uh, science instruments to measure the CO2 in the surface water, temperature and salinity, three indicators for ocean health and climate change, because we have to see uh, the bigger picture. So if we uh, mess around with our oceans, we mess around with our climate and the other way around. So that's, uh, that's the story um, under the slogan, a race you must win. One of the things that came to my mind during the pandemic was the, actual, the ocean was in a better place. It actually did some recovery. It actually enjoyed sort of less traffic, less pollution. Freedom. <laughs> and freedom. It was something I, I, I certainly spotted when I was in Greece during the pandemic, that, that mammals were more active. Everything was more healthy and happy. Is that fair? Well, absolutely. I mean, as sailors, uh, and I think uh, it's really nice to be surrounded by all these uh, ocean lovers, um, it is uh, basically the experience of nature firsthand. And uh, being in the elements, um, yeah, working with the elements, elements as, as a professional sailor is, uh, is really uh, something amazing. And I think this is what we also try to achieve with our message for the climate and the ocean. Um, that uh, basically sailing sports is very emotional, it's very challenging as well. Uh, you need a lot of endurance, a lot of power as well, and a lot of thinking. And um, this is, uh, yeah, uh, like one of our, let's say, passion that we ha want to use as a propulsion to inspire and educate people about uh, our climate mission. 
So what do you think the yachting industry can do? What, what are our core objectives? So I would say in principle also like because we, we also have a, a new boat, the Malizia 3, the Malizia Sea Explorer, and uh, I was sort of like also uh, part of the boat builders uh, at some point. Um, it was very interesting to see the innovation that goes into uh, the boating industry and the, like also innovation is, I think, um, is great, but it also has to be sustainable, right? Um, and this is, uh, of course, our principle when we build the boat was always if there is like an alternative, a sustainable alternative when it comes to material, when it comes to technology, uh, then we have picked this alternative, right? Uh, I also have something I want to show you. Um, for example, uh, we have a partnership with Green Boats uh, Technologies, and they're like front runners in sustainable materials and composites uh, used on our Imoka, like our boat class. Um, and it's it's 100% organic. It's a flux, uh, basically a flux composite, uh, with uh, with corn uh, buffer materials, and um, it's 100% recyclable. So, uh, of course, you cannot like replace all um, composites because you have to consider the tough and rough conditions in the Southern Ocean, for example. You don't want to have your boat. Uh, you know, you want to trust your boat. You want to. You don't want to. You know, break anything, um, so you really have to consider that as well. But um, where it's possible and where innovation can really um, play a role and where it comes together with sustainability, I think this is the way forward. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the things that also comes under the agenda of this Blue Innovation Doc is the next generation, as in future sailors, future people who build yachts. How do we inspire them? Because I'm worried about that in terms of what their appetite is or their attitude is to yachting as a pastime, but also yachting as an industry. For sure, um, of course. I think, I mean, there is a lot of there is a lot of uh, movement, and I mean, you see now here like the all these like great solutions and what you know the innovations out there. This is something uh, I think where uh, everyone comes together and and really see the driving factors in the industry. Um, I think what, what for me, uh, again, for me it's important really to highlight the sustainability aspects and um, because, you know, all these resources that we have, um, they're limited and a anything that helps basically to close the, the life cycle of, of, you know, the industry of the boat, like when it comes to recycling, for example, when it comes to transparency for, for the customer um, about what kind of materials have been uh, used for, for building the boat. I think there everything comes together and, um, and this is, I think, a very important uh, lesson learned uh, of this boat Düsseldorf 2023 um, that sustainability is, uh, is uh, basically like a selling point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there was a wonderful sort of experience that Boris had, which I wanted to talk to Boris about, but maybe you can give me some uh, insights on the journey with Greta. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, but also, were there any things that came out of the conversations on board, you think, that are things we can learn from? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, the, the, so Greta Thunberg, the climate activist, uh, she sailed, uh, Boris sailed her to the uh, United Nations uh, Summit, Climate Summit in New York, 2019. Um, and the, the slogan then was basically, unite behind science. So that's uh, the mission that drives us forward, that we also, with our partnership that we have uh, to, you know, um, to make the team uh, go out and, and, and do all the sailing and, and, and com compete on the toughest races, offshore races in the world, is really like to spread the message um, and to yeah, unite business and corporate uh, behind one message to decarbonize, to act. Uh, so it's like a race you must win climate action now. So it's like the, basically the, the, the racing, the sportive challenge that we see, but also like everyone, everyone here in the room can do something. And this is um, uh, what drives us forward and why also we are very close, not only with, uh, with let's say, the business world, with the yachting industry, but also very close to the society. And I mentioned our kids program, uh, My Ocean Challenge. Uh, this is also like this, the social aspect of our campaign that we really try to get the younger generation involved to learn about the ocean and, and to inspire them and to go out on the ocean and to, to see climate change firsthand, but also to act. 
You call it a race, right? How long do we have? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, if you look at the ocean, <coughs> um, you have incremental effects, right? So I'm, I'm not a client scientist, but I do love to read about it, and it's really important also, um, you know, to to see the developments and to learn about it. So if you see like the ocean, the the, the climate change is happening very incrementally, very slowly. So the CO2, which is emitted today, will be in the ocean for decades. So the, 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 the tremendous, like the question is, when, are, when is the tipping point? When do we reach a tipping point? I think nobody knows it. But that we are close to it, I think this is a matter of fact. And um, I mean, we see the outcomes of the, the COPs. We see, uh, we come together on these climate uh, dialogues and discu discussions. But I don't, I, I'm really like, I was a bit frustrated to see the results actually from Egypt, from the, from the COP, um, uh, from the latest climate dialogue, because it's, we, we, we know about all the facts, right? So let's, let's do something. So I really want to highlight the action now part of it. Um, I cannot answer the question about timing, but that we are close to a tipping point, I think that's for sure. I think that's the key point as a closing comment, Cornelius, is that there is no timeline, we just have to act now. Right. And all together. That's the message, isn't it? That's the, that's the message. And, and that's also like the message of our team participating in the ocean race. Uh, and, uh, and we are uh, really try to, uh, you know, build a movement out of this and to convince people. And, and, and these events, for example, they're, they're like perfect, the perfect platform to spread the message. And everyone is invited to go on our website, follow the boat, follow us. Uh, we also come by in Germany, uh, in Kiel. Uh, in, in June, beginning of June. And I'm um, also happy that uh, I see one of my colleagues over there, Kerstin. Uh, she w she's in charge of, uh, of the Kiel flyby. It's going to be like around a buoy and then uh, to the next stopover, which is then The Hague. And uh, the finals is in, in Genoa in um, end of June. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Cornelius. Thank you. Thank you. All right.